I'm Philip Siegel of Havana Phil Cigar Company. And I'm Shana Lee, the social media manager here and owner of Shana Lee Photography. Welcome to Behind the Smokescreen, where we give you a raw and unfiltered look at what it's like to run a business as two young entrepreneurs. In our line of work, we have the pleasure of creating relationships with a variety of characters. Influencers, athletes, models, digital media gurus, CEOs, and industry experts. And we'll be inviting them on to share with you. Sit back, grab a sip and a smoke as we take you behind the smoke screen. So, welcome to Behind the Smoke Screens. We have a very special guest today, Mr. Dave is Media, Dave Harding. Happy to be here. I was looking forward to this ever since we texted. I I'm love like, it. just give me that chance. I'm waiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we've, you know, we've had you in mind since you helped us start this podcast. So, we appreciate you coming on and and we're excited to hear about your new ventures and everything you have going on, which is a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, I don't. I never know where to start. It's always such mm-hmm. an awkward question to answer. So what's going on? And I'm just like, ah, what's happening today? So if you go follow Dave is Media on Instagram right now, you'll probably see him in a plane. Yes. In the back of a plane. Yep. And it looks really cramped. But you say it's not cramped. It's not. Surprisingly, for a four-seater airplane, there's a lot of room. Now, we did have me max and josh and it's max's airplane that we were building in south africa who's max so max maxwell mm. been on the show i yep. think he was one of the first guests he was the yeah. first guest. he was our first guest first yeah. guest so mm-hmm. i've known max for like 10 years now he actually ran a business with my brother back in maine they ran a restaurant a nightlife business so fast forward to 2017 2018 he finds me sleeping on my buddy's couch, our mutual friend in Nashville, because I'm trying to like do the Davies Media thing in Nashville. Spoiler, it didn't work out, but he sparked this idea for me to do a course. And I said, oh yeah, like, is there really money in that? Like, I didn't know. I just thought people were online pitching and there was nothing behind it. So then we decided to work together. We did a video shoot for his, um, I think it was 2018 We Live conference. And ever since then, We've been working together. He convinced me to move to Winston in 2019. And then to all of 2019 before COVID, we were probably flying every single weekend to some different city. He was doing meetups and I was his camera guy, shooting, editing in the hotel, sleeping on the airplane, rinse, repeat, do it again. Um, so- Was that on his private plan? No, that was all commercial. Okay. So now Glow he's up. got his plane, which is very cool. Like we pull up to Opalaka in Miami, this executive airport, and we just get out, you get out of the plane, just walk through this really nice lobby. It smells amazing. They have like Rolex and Ferrari. What does it smell like? like? Where am I? It's like, it it, it smells like when you meet that pretty girl for the first time and you're like, I cannot get this scent out of my head. Right. Except it's just somebody behind a reception desk and they're just like checking their stuff. And you're like, oh, wait, back to reality. There is no pretty girl here. But it smells like that. There could be like, the reception. I could hang out in this lobby for hours and I'd be fine. Yeah. So, but I'm usually in the back of the plane filming content and we have like six GoPros going and we got to go to Florida for the week. It's pretty great. Yeah. Like life is good. I, I, yeah. no complaints. So, do you guys, are, do you have like a, do you plan your schedule out and you know what you're doing for like the next three months? Or do you have sort of an ad hoc kind of thing where you just, we need to go do this this week and you jump on a plane and go, how does that, how's your scheduling work? I wish it is like living in chaos. I yeah. love schedules, <laughs> but I've learned to just be like, you know what, this is never going to work. So I'm just ready at all times of the day mm-hmm. to get a call to say, Hey, tomorrow we're going to LA. Mm-hmm. Okay. Got it. We shift everything else and go, and that's kind of just how it is with, with Max's schedule. He had a two day mastermind in Miami. Um, and then when we were traveling, people would call him and say, hey, can you come speak in my city? And we kind of just make a decision on the spot. Hey, do you want to just be away for a couple more days? So like <laughs> the first six months I'm in Winston, I don't have a place. Yeah, mm. I didn't need it. I would just stay on Max's couch because it didn't make sense. I was, we were never home. So why pay rent if you're mm-hmm. not gonna live right. there? But it's, it's total it's total chaos, but just embrace it. I've noticed that that's pretty much how all successful companies are. They don't have a five, 10 year plan. It's just, it's day by day. Like when we were interviewing Adrian, uh, 
our McDonald's friend, he owns a bunch of franchises. It's, it's completely day by day. You mm-hmm. don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if there's going to be a pandemic and you don't know if you're going to be in Miami tomorrow, but wherever that road goes, you're ready. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about your new venture, the new project you have going on. What's it called? What, what's it about? So it's uh, it definitely has been a labor of love. And um, Max and the guys on the team will say it took me way too long to, to get it to come to fruition. And actually, the first time I came here, when I met you, I mentioned it to you and Wes. And I said, I'm working on this thing. It's called now it's called the CEO Content Blueprint. And I help CEOs or, you know, successful business people that say, look, my business is going great, but my personal brand doesn't exist. It's lacking. It's inconsistent. And Max's personal brand makes, you know, six figures a month. So his personal brand has really elevated everything else he's able to do in business Mm -hmm. because of the videos that Matt, uh, my fellow colleague and editor and shooter are able to create. So from that brand, I said, well, if we do it for Max and it works, why not share it with other people and help them? And so we had a, a really good launch. It's the first time I've ever done a course and I did all the coding on the site. It's a click funnel site, so it's not super complicated, but mm-hmm. it was a lot of late nights to get it together. And and now it's just like the emails are set up, everything just kind of running. Mm-hmm. And like I'll get a sale, I'll be like, I built it's so satisfying to know you built something and you're making a sale and you're like, I made that sale. That's right. crazy. <laughs> By hand. By yeah, hand. And, then, and then you don't have to do, I mean, you don't really have to do a, a lot more after that. You just set it and forget it kind of thing. I, I wish, but you're you're right because there's, so many, there's so many things that are set it and forget it. Like the email follow-ups, you set that up. Um, you know, I'm pretty active in the group, but it'll send you a login. And then you're in there. I have, I think five hours of content talking about content. So it's very meta, but if I need to make a video, I'll add it and you get lifetime access for, you know, 497, which mm-hmm. is absolute steal. I paid 160,000 to go to, you know, film school in California. So mm-hmm. this is, it's not really my way of giving back. It's just, I love talking about this stuff and I mm-hmm. figured I need to monetize this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how exactly, who are you trying to reach with this project? So I'm trying to reach anybody that, that cares about, you know, their Instagram, their YouTube. They want to build a YouTube and they want to do more than just their core uh, business. And Mm -hmm. so we show them how to make a thumbnail for your YouTube video Mm -hmm. and what's a good keyword based on your industry. And so it's really case by case. So I actually, I think I mentioned you guys in there. I say, you know, one client actually (laughs) took my advice and started their podcast. And here we are. Yes, Mm -hmm. They're actually doing it. But, you know, it takes work. Yeah, you know, there, there's no there's no automation to having a successful brand because you got to pivot and, you know, you got you got to make it work. So if you didn't want this podcast to happen, it wouldn't be happening. Right. It's your driving the bus. Mm-hmm. And like for Max, like he's in he's in charge of the direction. I'm just there to make sure that we stay well oiled and like moving quickly. So I, I know a lot of guys who could use this course and perfect. Um, they're typically, they own a cigar retail, yeah. they're older, they don't really know what they're doing and they should really hire somebody to handle it for them. But what is, absolutely? what's the pitch to those guys to buy in on this class right now? So the pitch to them right now would be, you know, I know you don't have somebody making content and you definitely need that person. And part of what I do is actually help you hire that person or create just like that initial video. And, and I guess what I would say is if you didn't have somebody, like if you didn't have this crew here, getting your photos done, getting your podcast done, I would say just get your phone out and make as many videos as you can because you're gonna attract guys like Matt and I, who's off screen, and we're gonna say, hey, I see you're making videos, but honestly, they suck. So <laughs> let me help you right. make this better. Yeah. So it's actually the opposite of, you don't always wanna just bring somebody in and start with like a lot of polish. You want to put out as much content as you can, and then that will attract people that want to want. They're like, "I see your brand; it's amazing. Let me help you make it better." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People come in just to the podcast and want Flynn's information because they know they see everything they see that we're quality. doing here. Yeah, and they see shout out Flynn Flynn, right? Our producer Big Flynn. So legit. They've definitely asked for his contact information from there. I'm hoping he's getting some work out of that, but. Um, 
You, you mentioned that with Max, you merge the personal brand with the business brand. Right. And that you're really highlighting the personal side of it. With your course, are you talking about how important it is to merge brand your brand in that way? And what are some of your tips? Can you give us of a course. few of those I can, tips? I can, I can drop a couple things. Yeah, just a Sneak little bit peek. of knowledge yeah. so we can know what we're getting into when we buy your course. So for Max, you know, he's always just been a business person that has just merged and his lifestyle is the same as like, there's no compartmentalizing. Mm -hmm. Like we've been friends before we started working together. And at some point down the road, when we do part our separate ways, you know, we will continue to be friends and yeah. that will merge in a, in a different way <clears throat> where I'm running a different business. He's running one, but for him, it's, you know, how do we highlight the natural part of his day, which just happens to be, he's going to a meeting or he's meeting with a friend for coffee and you, you take those little events. They're like scenes in a movie and you kind of package them together for Instagram. It could be a minute for YouTube. Maybe it's a 20 minute conversation he has. Um, you know, with his mentor, Mr. Robinson about the stock market and they just happen to be talking about it. And I'm just fly on the wall, sitting there capturing it. So the more authentic you can be, it's not about staging. I just like, I want to see who the real person is. Mm -hmm. And that's why people tune into YouTube. Cause they're like, I'm not getting some polished, like cut thing. Mm -hmm. I'm getting uncut, which is another great thing about podcasts. Mm -hmm. It's just one take Jake. Like mm -hmm. you're right. in, you're out, you make a mistake. Like you just keep going. <laughs> yeah. People yeah. like that because if you can be vulnerable, it gives them permission to be vulnerable. And maybe somebody hearing me will say, I need to go start something. Like, yeah. I just needed to hear it from that voice on that day. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why, you know, somebody I look up to Gary V his stuff, you have to hear it over and over and over. It just happens to be that moment that you hear it and then you actually act on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gary V. Um, he well, he gives a lot of the same similar type of advice. So after a while, it was just like, are you going to just keep listening to the advice and just looking up to me, or are you going to actually take the advice and do something with it? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think like the goal is that people aren't just chasing Jerry, Gary, Jerry, Gary V. All the time that they're actually taking that information and that knowledge and and like running with it and taking that energy because yeah. he has a lot of energy. Like you're energy. you're doing something with it right now. Yeah. Right. That's, that's all that matters to me. That's a win. Yeah. No matter if I make money or not, mm -hmm. I want people to make content because whether you see it this way or not, it's your legacy. Mm -hmm. And when, like when I'm an old man, you know, hopefully I get to be old enough to, to get there. I want to look back and be like, wow, I was on this podcast. I was doing this and that. Like, I want to see that. Yeah. yeah. It's like having live photo albums. Mm -hmm. It'll be there forever. Yeah. That's Hope. your legacy. Yeah. Cemented. Mm-hmm. And we have people who are members here and like last night, for example, I was, you know, pitching our Super Bowl potluck for our, our members nice. and I was back there and they wouldn't stop talking about the podcast. They were talking about how therapeutic it was and That's like so cool. how un, how raw it is and unfiltered and, you know, it, it's just a beautiful thing. So I think everyone should buy your course. Oh, I appreciate and that. Get I on, agree. Yeah. Everybody should. And just get on that level because you can affect people in so many different ways by just getting after it. You're you just know? telling your story. Yeah. And your story is going to keep changing. So every single day you're pivoting in, in a, a little micro way. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just love telling stories. Humans mm -hmm. have needed stories since the beginning of time, since the cave paintings. It's how mm -hmm. we communicate. Mm -hmm. So storytelling is that one profession that will never die. Yeah. We we crave stories. Speaking sure. of stories, let's hear some stories about Boston. Boston. Yeah. I haven't been I haven't been in Boston in a while, but I got some stories about Boston. Yeah. Wait, are you from Boston? I'm from Maine. Okay. Ninety miles up the road. But I have many, many roots in Boston. Many yeah. Boston sports stories. Yes. I'm I, sure I, you'd love I, to hear those. Let's hear some of that. <laughs> Uh, little Tom Brady, little uh, Tory Krug. Yeah, the, you know, I, I I was really trying to line up a meeting with Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. so, I, so back in 2016, 2017, I did this cookbook. So I got this cookbook. I was doing the photography off of a Craigslist post. So at the time I was making no money, freelancing. And I said, I'm gonna spend an hour in the morning, an hour at night responding to every Craigslist ad remotely related to photography and video and let's just see what happens. 
So I'm sitting at the airport at Logan, picking up some friends from LA and I get a phone call and I always just pick up like, yeah, this is Dave. And hey, are, uh, do you like, um, you know, athletes and, you know, beverages? Like I saw you responded to the, the ad and I just always say yes. Mm -hmm. And that turned into a photo shoot with Troy Brown. That was the first shoot from the, from the Patriots. Super Bowl hero. Yes. Yeah. With our man, Tom Brady, who is back in the Super Bowl for the 10th time. Unbelievable. Basically half the time he's been in the league, he's been in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And that turned into 60 to 70 more shoots. I got to meet Bill Russell, just iconic, like wow. probably the most legendary person I've mm -hmm. ever met. And that turned into getting a book published with all the recipes of all these Hall of Fame New England athletes, met Tori Krug along the way, mm -hmm. um, Jarvis Green, who I keep in touch with pretty good, played for the Pats. Sweet. And I think you just realized like all these guys in Boston, as a kid, oh, I get, got to meet David Ortiz, who, who the book was about. Big poppy. Big poppy. Big, big deal. He's a big cigar guy. He is. Yeah. We, we actually, the first time I did a shoot with him was in uh, Saratoga Springs, New York. Mm. And it's him, his dad, all his buddies, you know, they're selling the cigars. And it's like a cigar, cigar and wine show. I can't mm. remember what the name of it was. But we're sitting there having some drinks. I'm trying to talk to his dad, but his dad only really speaks Spanish. And we're all in this big, the big like event tent. And David's over there signing some autographs. He's like signing wine bottles. Um, and then his dad is just like talking, laughing. And suddenly he like leans back in his chair against the, the side of the tent. He just falls back in his chair and like 20 <laughs> people rush. They're like, oh my God, are you okay? And he was, you know, he just had a couple of drinks. He was yeah, fine. Right. But I've never seen so much like sheer panic with like Red Sox fans. Like, oh my God, <laughs> big poppy's poppy is down. <laughs> the big, big <laughs> poppy. Big, big poppy. I love um, that. You know, so, I, but you know, getting to meet those guys, you realize they're icons if you're a New England sports fan just regular people they mm -hmm. like being treated like regular people and that was how i was able to connect with so many of them yeah so d who do you got in the super bowl pat uh uh tampa bay i wanted <laughs> to say the pats because tom brady's <laughs> in the super bowl but uh yeah tampa i just you know yeah couldn't be more biased with my I mean, selection it'd be hard to bet against tom brady in his 10th super bowl that's tough yeah um legendary I think he's been in more Super Bowls than any team in the NFL has been in any Super team. Bowls. Dang. Yeah. So if he does get the win, it'll be seven for ten. That's astounding. Seventy percent. Crazy. Yeah. It's a good percentage. I, I haven't been watching a ton of sports though since I've moved down here. Mm -hmm. Just because I needed to get back on the business kick and like I wouldn't have been able to do the course if I was watching so much so many sports and I would watch Bruins, Red Sox, Patriots, Celtics, like every season my life was so consumed with it. So I'll still pop in and, and watch if something's on, but um, I just haven't given it that much time. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm okay. I'm living I'm fine. <laughs> I have a random question. I'd say, yeah. oh my God. Do you ever get afraid in the plane? Like, do you ever have that anxiety of like, oh shit. This like is so funny. Crash. I was just listening to some somebody <laughs> have this exact conversation um, and they were like, it was somebody that flies planes and he was like, I think this was on a podcast or something I was listening to. And he was like, people are always saying stuff to me about like, that's that man, that's not, bro, that's not like, is that safe? Or aren't you scared? He's like, I'm just trying to live. Y'all would just stop asking me that yeah. because I'm just trying to live and like, it's fine. I'm really okay. But you probably get that question all the time because people are, I think there's a lot of people that have a fear of flying. I think people want to ask, but they don't because mm -hmm. they feel like it's bad luck or taboo to ask. Do you really? think it is? No, I don't think so. I think it's a normal question of anything that you don't understand. But yeah. if you understand the physics of flight, it's very safe. Yeah. You don't need the prop. You can still glide and land the plane. Totally fine. It's, I'm not worried about it now. We did have a situation where we were flying around and we had uh, an IFR flight plan. So you could go through the clouds, you have to file a flight plan ahead of time and you need somebody who's rated. So Josh is rated to fly. And um, so we we're going through the clouds. We got a little disoriented and I kind of, I was filming cause I wanted to get the clouds like enveloping the, the cabin and stuff. And then I said, oh wait, 
the speed, something's happening. I'm like, oh no, something's happening. And I had that like brief moment of like, oh, oh, is this it? No, oh no, no, it's not. Everything leveled out, we were cool. Wow. Uh, but I Wait, you had that. a moment of, is this it? Like this is my last moment. I'm like, this, maybe something's gonna happen. <laughs> This, this could See, be no, this could be that it. Would not, that it wouldn't be like it was that fleeting. Though. I would have a total, complete anxiety attack. But you realize, like, what like, are I, you going to do? You can't control the situation, especially if you're not flying the plane. Like, I'm just there. If I was flying, I would. I would, be flying the plane. I would have to, because then it, you know, you're in control. But it's 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 very safe, and that his plane is so smart. You can dial an autopilot. It will get to a straight and level flight. Mm -hmm. It can take you down to like. 30 feet off the ground. Wow. And then you take wow. over and land it. So, no, nah, I'm, I'm not worried. It's very safe. So what happened that, that you like? We were just trying to find a hole to get out of the clouds to change altitudes. And we were just banking at a certain angle. And the speed, like, was just kind of getting slower and slower. And at a certain speed, like, you get stall speed. And you practice stalls to know what happens. So we were just getting close to stall speed. But um. it was because I was focused on filming. And I didn't really realize what was happening. And I said, oh, something serious might be happening mm -hmm. and then we were fine and i haven't thought about it since since yeah. right now <laughs> you're welcome I, I, I had an air pocket one time flying into like vegas and i thought i was gonna die and i lost it like i was crying really? <laughs> like, i could not stop crying don't ever invite her on your plane <laughs> <laughs> i'd have to run it by max anyway but good to know i i think you know i have a little bit of a fear you know, you you do feel it more when there's turbulence in a smaller plane. Yeah. yeah. But that's just because it's, you know, it's lightweight. I think it's like 2,100 pounds or something, like fully weighted. So, yeah. wow. you know, you're going to get tossed a little bit. But when it's smooth, it's you go so fast, 130 knots, just you're cruising. Beautiful. And it's just like, you can fall asleep in there. Mm. We, um... <laughs> We you typically, can fall asleep yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will always fly because I love to travel, but yeah. Uh, we typically take a trip to Honduras every year with our uh, customers. That's cool. Have you have you guys ever been to Honduras? I haven't. It's the second most dangerous place to land in the world. Really? Because the 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 landing strip is between two humongous valleys, um, and. The landing strip is very short and outdated. So your approach has to be spot on. So the approach is if you're looking out of a window, it looks like you're about to hit a mountain. And typically the pilot goes on the PA system and they're like, look, I've done this a thousand times. I was in the Navy. <laughs> blah, That's blah. a good number of times. <laughs> yeah. Wait, but we're about to have a really good. scary looking landing, yeah. but it's just typical. Like it looks like we're going to run into this mountain, but I promise we're going to be okay. We're not. And everyone starts freaking out. I'm just like, okay, that's what I wanted to hear, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's I want to hear the I'm confidence aware. from this guy flying me into this humongous mountain. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you guys should do it. Here's the, I would love to Take do a it. nice video. Yeah. The way I think about it is, and Max says this too, he goes, I love myself more than I love you guys. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm sold. Yeah. I'm safe. <laughs> Max wants to make it through. That means I'm definitely going to make it through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, that's not, but I'm learning how to become a pilot. So, uh, I have about 12 and a half at flight hours. Oh, nice. I got to pass my written test, but Josh, who is a uh, AMP mechanic and flight instructor, and he guys a phenomenal pilot. He's been with us all the time. Helped Max get through the last bit of his training. He's, he's helping me and we're working on some stuff with him, with his branding. So it's, it's great. It's a win, win. Sweet. I get to learn how to be a pilot and I help him, you know, brand his content. So are you going to buy cool. a plane? That's really cool. Uh, yes. Nice. I'm, I'm hooked. The same con that Max made? I think so. I think so. We went to South Africa for 30 days. And part of that was because his airplane is an experimental. So you need to build 51% of it just uh, for it to be, I guess, like passed. Um, mm -hmm. So we went out there to the plant. We just rolled up, showed up. Uh, we were, he was in there painting, like I was filming the whole thing, getting this great documentary. And we got to fly to some incredible places, flew into game reserves. Like there, you just pull up, we, we did a flyover. There's a giraffe running across the runway. Wow. I'm like, you don't see that every day. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, does a, does a lap around and then so we cool. land. At, what a life. And um, yeah, you're like, I just pulled up in an airplane to a game reserve. What am I doing? Mm 
Yeah. That's that is, like, Am surreal. I doing this? Yeah. Yeah. You guys Crazy. worked the whole, like a lot of the time you were there though, right? Did you have any time where you could just we, chill? We and, had some chill time, yeah. but we would get to the factory at like 7.30 in the morning and get there and, you know, I'd film some stuff and Max would turn wrenches and work on the engine. And he really wanted to get to know his plane like intimately because he's going to be flying it. Mm -hmm. And with a plane like that, you want to understand it to the point that you could fix it or at least diagnose it and feel safe going up or saying, you know, it's better to be on the ground looking up than in the sky looking down. Right. You always want to be like, I could be up there. Glad I'm down here. Mm -hmm. And we, yeah, we just worked, we worked a lot. And um, South Africa is just a beautiful place. Like, I, I want to go back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, COVID, you know, pending. I'm mm -hmm. sure we will be back. I want to go capture some more lions. Got mm -hmm. a ton of great footage. Mm -hmm. And build a plane. And build a plane. Casual. Mm -hmm. When you said capture some more lions, you mean on your on my, film camera? Yes. I just want to be clear about yes, that. No. <laughs> yeah, you guys got I have some no sweet interest <laughs> in actually capturing an animal. That, that sounds terrifying. Be, be careful mm -hmm. with our no, wording there. Yeah. Full context of photographer with the long lens. Mm -hmm. But that long lens, we were still from me like 20 feet from this lion and just roaring for like 30 seconds. Yeah. It is my favorite clip I've that. ever captured. Yeah, that, that was, was so sweet. Cool. I'm just like, please, nobody talk. Just don't say anything. This is a moment of silence. Mm -hmm. Was he the hurt one? He was hurt. He looked like he's been in a few battles. Yeah, yeah he had a lot of scars. There was one that one of you guys posted that I thought he was hurt, and I thought that he was, like, dying oh, the way he was probably crying. just sleeping. Well, yeah, and he wasn't. He was fine. Yeah, he was fine. Um, that was cat. so cool, though. That's What a cool experience. Shana was worried about him. I was. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Like, hey, wait, did care. you just post a video of a dying lion? Like, that's so no. wrong. I, well, I wasn't about to be like, hey, I are you dying? Cats. Are you good? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, uh, now I'm I dying. Cats. I got too close. <laughs> the guide, though, tells you if something like that charges you, do not run. And actually, you should run toward it. I don't know if <laughs> I can actually bad. will myself <laughs> to do that. But I guess because we walk on two legs and we have our eyes close together, that the other predators are like, maybe I don't want to mess with this thing. Yeah. Mm. So some of those guys will walk out in the bush. And I'm like, nah, I'm good in the Land Cruiser. Like you got, you know, the yeah. weapon just in case. Right. I'm going to stay right here with my camera and, and just be four still. Wheels. So what, what has business been like during this unprecedented time here? Because we've been in a couple times, but mm -hmm. you know, like it's after hours and. Uh, I can't complain. It's been going well. We're growing. Somehow we yeah. have limited hours. Like yeah. typically, we would be open right now, um, but we're somehow making it work. You know, it, it's like we were talking about earlier. It's day by day. It's not the year plan. Like one of my sales reps came in and asked me like, "What my plan is for the year?" And it's like, how the fuck am I supposed to yeah, know? Yeah, you're like, looking at it, baby. I'm still being restricted every day. There's new extensions being put on us. And it's just like, you just have to figure it out. You got to do new shit, adapt and change. Or else, what are you doing? Right. You know, you're just sitting here complaining. So. And that's getting nothing done for anybody. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think it's working out. Yeah. Having I mean, fun. hey. The store's doing good too, right? Yeah. Got a lot of sales in the store. Mm -hmm. Really? Well, everyone's stuck in Greensboro. Typically, a lot of people okay, are traveling true. around and going on business trips, but everyone is working remote. So that's mm -hmm. definitely beneficial to us. Do you have anybody who comes in to work remote? Oh, my God. <laughs> Did I open a can of worms? You're like, ah, <laughs> 11 o'clock. I'm going to just pull up to the bar. And people get think it done. it's their office in here. <laughs> and, you know. We love them, but at the same time, it's like you could work at your house yes. like one day a week yeah. instead of coming here six days. But we love you, so keep coming back. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Funny. I like it. Yeah. How's the new job? Oh, God. So <laughs> last, Ooh, new job. Okay, so last week, Phil <laughs> kind of announced ask me about <laughs> announce for you yes so i um i took a position i don't like the whole thing's back so, wrangler uh, yeah, wait wait, wait so. say oh, that again i was talking <laughs> oh no no we were yeah we're area all the way oh no <laughs> i got my wranglers on right now uh-oh um what are you area 
They, they're our full sponsor for uh, Ezekiel Mitchell. Where are they based? In uh, Union City, California. Okay, well, we're City, here in so. Greensboro. Yeah, it's far, it's far away. We're cool. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, Wrangler is a huge presence. You should send me a pair. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, boots? Huh? Uh, no boots. boots. Jeans? Cool. Jeans, yeah. Right. Let's see you. I'll convince you. 34 by 32. It's on the video, so if I forget, I'll just rewatch the episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, <laughs> the job's going good. Yeah. What are you doing with Wrangler? I work in their photo studio. Perfect. Yeah, so I'm in post production with them, but um, I'm still running my business on the side, and we talked about that in the last podcast. But I'm still taking shoots. Like I have a shoot tomorrow. Um, and I'm still taking weddings this year, but I'm just limiting my shoots to things that I really want to do, um, things that I'm more passionate about. And before I was taking everything that came my way, and now I can be a little more selective, which is nice. And um, just it's like really conducive to my and you know, I didn't like I I think I will always have my business. I love what I do, um, but I'm also a single mom with one income, and I needed that stability. And so that's why I made the decision to take the job, but also because it was a job still in my industry. It wasn't like I was taking something that I had to take because I needed something. It was something that I still am passionate about and that I love to do. So I think running my own business led me to a position where I could um, still be in the same industry doing what I love, which, you know, not everybody has the opportunity to do so. You got to fight for that. Like yeah. I would, Ever since I've been 23, pretty much the only thing I've done has been with images mm -hmm. or sound editing or video or even being a grip, like holding a boom pole or mm -hmm. gaffer. I just, I, I have to do something related. To I've making. done that. Yeah. Boom, boom up, gaffer. Uh, I was just like assisting my cousin make yes. a video. <laughs> well, yeah, that video is dope. So yeah. whatever you did, add yeah. it to the situation. Mm -hmm. This was a different, it was in Cuba. It was Even a free better. trip to Cuba, so oh, I just held the done. microphone and done. Yeah, I've been to Cuba one time. How'd you like it? It was amazing. Mm -hmm. We did a humanitarian aid trip. I want to say it was like 2000 or 1999. It's a while ago. Oh shit! Me and my dad. Did you go to Havana. Mm -hmm. Nice. So somewhere in my dad's house is a roll of like Polaroid, and I need to get that. That'd be tight. Like, I'd his love house to is see that. Cluttered. I need it. Mm -hmm. I just need those photos. Yeah. Because I can only remember what it looked like. Well, it hasn't changed. Really? It doesn't change. Did, did you ever get in one of those egg taxis? They have like they're these like tiny little taxis. It's like two, three seaters. Yeah. And it looks like those, a, yeah. a teacup rides, but it's on wheels. I've never seen and that. And it doesn't seem safe at all, but we got in a bunch of them. Yeah. No, I didn't. we didn't get any, but I saw them. Yeah. My uncle is a nutbag. He goes there like 10, 12 times a year. Wow. And so he like knows all these people down there and he only drive, he would only drive in a dropped off convertible from like the 1950s. Just like, like a movie. Yeah. It was That's like, so badass. It was pink or orange or red. It was, it was pretty sweet. Cuba. The pictures are so cool. He like, I've seen some of his pictures. Yeah. They're really nice. Yeah, I'd like to go there. Yeah. You should take Max there. Yeah. We fly. Yeah, we could fly. Yeah. Just gotta get through their airspace. I mean, you guys would create some serious content there and probably fall in love with the people because they're beautiful. They're so honest and just straightforward maybe, and they, they love everyone. Maybe it's a collab trip. Let's do it. Should try to figure that out because I'm sure there's a reason that we can all go at the same time. Yeah. I love that. Behind the smoke That'd screens. Be awesome. yes. Yeah. Yes. Because, I mean, Cuban cigars. Yeah. That was my first real introduction to cigars. Yeah. My dad was adamant. He goes, we have to go to the factory and we have to bring back a box because they limit like what you can bring back just mm -hmm. as a tourist. I think it was you like- You can't even bring any back anymore. Wow. Nothing. I still have the box. Perfect. Yeah, I need, I was like, this is my souvenir. I mean, I'm sure I was like 15. I'm like, yep, cigar time. This is like the first time I smoked anything. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I'm sure I coughed a bunch, but it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think I'm getting the hang of but it now. But you're in Cuba, in Havana. Yeah. I mean, that's the place to do it. Is there anywhere you haven't been that you really want to go? Yeah, I'd really like to go to Europe and just like, I don't know, bum around with the backpack and take photos of everything. Because mm -hmm. you can like just cruise around there. Um, never been to Europe. 
South America sounds really cool to fly in there. Betty in. I feel like a lot of the a lot of pre pre COVID a lot of the young people were doing a lot of that kind of backpacking and I feel like I'm I mean I did I went to I've been to England Scotland Ireland and Wales when young I was people. in college yeah. you are young people yeah but I'm saying Our like people. now I'm mm-hmm. like I can still go but I just can't go that in that capacity you can do because it. I'm a mom yeah but, we'll go um. Yeah, I guess I'm a little envious of it, to be honest. Like, I, I think I missed the boat a little bit in those ye- in my 20s to, like... Like, study abroad. Like, I never studied abroad yeah, because I, like I went to school in California and I was from Maine. And I said, 3,000 miles. I kind of went abroad almost. Yeah. So I'm going to chill on the travel, hang out here. It's nice here. I literally picked college because I had palm trees. I said, this place looks great. <laughs> looks nothing like Maine. I'm sold. Whatever I got to do gotta get in what city were you in california santa clara beautiful steve nash represent yeah. okay yeah norcal west uh west knight has that famous steve nash story yes you know he actually gave our friend nazar a signed sons jersey steve nash so oh. the first time i go to nazar's house i go where did you get this jersey he's like mm. oh my boy west i'm like this is amazing it's tight yeah it's small world full circle i love it yeah, I miss, uh, I definitely had good times there. I definitely miss it. But, I mean, I got done paying my student loans last year. And I Congrats. graduated in 2009. Thank nice. you. Nice. Mm-hmm. It feels great. I One bet. less giant loan on my back. Mm-hmm. And here you are in freezing cold North Carolina. What am I doing? <laughs> Everything is, is great. It's just cold. Would you rather go to New York <laughs> City or L.A.? Because New York in the summertime, I swear I can't be anywhere. Yeah. Except maybe uh, the main coast in the summertime is like it's they call it vacation land. It's the best place to be. But is energy, that Nantucket? Oh, no, upstate no, New no, York no, is beautiful. Maine. Upstate mm. New York is gorgeous in the summertime too. Like the Finger Lakes. There's just no. I love the lakes. There's just no no ocean and like yeah. I feel like Manhattan. You feel like you're in the center of the world. You can be anywhere. You can get pizza at two a.m. And it absolutely slaps. <laughs> it's so good. Mm-hmm. Dollar Slice I used to live on Dollar Slice. Mm-hmm. But I still haven't lived in LA. So I'd like to do that. Because I've lived in New York. I've done it. I know what it is. I don't know if I'll like LA. But I got to try it. Yeah. I got to see what happens. I love that. I don't know when, but we'll see. When all this COVID stuff is over, what's the one thing that you want to do that you haven't been able to do? I mean, this dude is flying on planes like every week. No, but maybe he there's does whatever you maybe want. There's some <laughs> yeah, we gotta do whatever we want. It's been awesome, but, but it, it, it restricts where exactly you can go. Like mm-hmm. we really pushed to get into South Africa. We had to have a negative COVID test. We had to have an official business letter from the business we were working with in South Africa to give us a need because you couldn't just go as a tourist. And then um, what else did we need? Or maybe it doesn't even have anything to do with travel per se. Maybe it's just something that you've been limited on in some capacity. I think go to like a a sporting event with people. Yes. Like a packed sporting event. That's what I mean. Like Mm -hmm. Fenway Park, middle of summertime. Feel the energy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, feeling the energy. Like you miss that. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people forget what it's like to like hug people. Yeah. Yeah. That's not like, that is a serious thing you need for your health. Super excited and high five random people yeah. that are sweaty and right. disgusting yeah well, like and somebody keep- hits a home run you're like yeah this guy it doesn't <laughs> sound appealing at all but it's something you just love you didn't think you'd miss it <laughs> but, yeah. and you keep, <laughs> really do miss yeah. it and you keep talking about new york but new york is not the same like if you went to new york now it would not be like that like what you know of that right high now. energy no. excitement kind of stuff. it's not the you same know the now. people yeah. my sister just moved to brooklyn and everything I mean, businesses are shut down. They're restricted on stuff, but she seems to be having a great time. Just I mean, because they, she, but early on, they were, it was like some serious lockdowns. Going but there's on. still so much to do as far as like going out in nature and, and going to different restaurants and bodegas and like experience. You can experience everything. It's just the you can't go out past yeah. nine. Yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah. You're not going to hit like a three o'clock pizza shop. Pizza some of joint. the best times were like riding the subway with your buddies at 2 a.m. <laughs> right. And just going wherever. Right. Yeah, wherever the night would take you. Yeah. 
or like packed nightclubs where you could dance and like all night because they stay yeah. open till like four. Uh, yeah, you can just stumble out. Yeah, yeah. Like that scene in Entourage when they go back to New York. Mm-hmm. I just rewatched that for like the twentieth time. I yeah. always, I think like once a year I'll rewatch that show. I'm on it, it too. In the background. Yeah. Just, it's just Entourage. Movie. What's your favorite season? I really liked the later season. I, I think whatever the season is when Ari, he has to fire the one guy, Rob, who like he just got like LASIK surgery <laughs> yeah. and he's in the conference room and Babs is like giving him a hard time mm-hmm. about, come on, Ari, like you can't fire anybody. Like what's the matter with you? Mm-hmm. And he walks in and he writes on the board. He's like, see if you can read this. He's like, get <laughs> the fuck out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, Ari's back. I'm in. Yeah. I'm fully into this yeah. show. Yeah, I love the the season where he buys Terrence's agency and he takes a Nerf gun and just sh- or oh, the, yeah, paintball the paintball gun. gun. I have a photo. Yeah. I have a mural of that in my room. Mm-hmm. I look, look at that just to yeah. get that energy. Yeah, <laughs> no one is safe. Incredible energy, dude is unreal. Such a good show. Yeah, I highly recommend Entourage still to anybody. Even Shayna. Have you seen it? No. Oh. I don't know if you'd like it. Why do you say that? The pilot is, the for pilots, it's pretty good pilot. Yeah. Usually if you can, I always give any show one to two episodes mm-hmm. before I make a decision. Mm-hmm. I, like even Sex and the City, great show. Like I could watch any show, any movie. I'll be entertained somehow. Yeah. Have you watched The Queen's Gambit? No, but I've heard amazing it's things. So good. I, oh, binge, it's good. I just binge watched that. And um, what's the other one? Bridgerton. Bridgerton. I just, I just binge watched both of them. I've heard a lot about Bridgerton. They're so good. Both of I just always so have to we avoid. We haven't seen it. We just rewatch old <laughs> HBO shows. You know, I'm, like, I'm like, I don't know about this. I know this. This is comfortable. Yeah, Let me yeah. watch this. I know what's going to happen. I still get anxiety when I'm like, ah, mm-hmm. this scene's about to happen. Mm-hmm. Do you ever get that? Like you're like secondhand embarrassed for characters, yeah. even if you've seen it already. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I know how this is going to go, but all right, just, just let me just get through this. You're like on the ride with them. That's a lot of empathy right there. Yeah. That's how you have to be. Like you fall in love with a character. You do. Mm-hmm. Yes. Feel what they feel. You just mm-hmm. really do. That's that's the best part about stories. You get to you get to see it through somebody else's eyes. That's what I always am so envious of actors. Is mm-hmm. You get to literally be someone. Someone else. else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I used to want to be an job. actress when I was when I was like high school into college. I used to work for Screen Gym Studios down in Wilmington and was on like the One Tree Hill and Dawson's Creek and stuff no like that. Way. Yeah, I used That's to be so like cool. I used to do extra work for those. Extra work is fun. Yeah, and then and then I worked for the studio for a little while, so I gave tours of the One Tree Hill sets and stuff. And okay, Loki, I mean, it's famous. Fun. Let's go. <laughs> Shut up. No. Heck yeah. <laughs> Not at all. But and I remember like Frank Capra Jr., who his dad was uh, directed or produced. It's a Wonderful Life. Mm-hmm. So I interviewed Classic. him. He was my business of film professor. Interviewed him. He was my business of film That's professor. A big deal. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. All right, this is my claim to fame. I've never seen that show, One Which Tree one? Hill. One Tree Hill. Is it I've good? never seen it either. I've to be honest, clips. I didn't really People watch rave. the show very much. Too close to uh, it. But I did give tours of the sets. You're like, yeah. I'm just on this show. You've never, <laughs> you've <laughs> never been curious to watch it. No, I have watched it. Probably the ones that I was in. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there's some actors that they don't watch the movies that they're in. Yeah. I yeah. don't fully believe that, but I want to because it's a really, that's discipline. That's what Max yeah. does. Max Maxwell. Yeah. He's just like, all right, I was in it. Cool. You guys cut it, ship it, send it. Yeah. On to the next. He ain't got time for that shit. He does not. The man has no time for that. He has a lot to do. Well, like, and I when do you not live envy it, that stress. It's and when you live it, like you don't really need to rewatch. No, you're you like, I was it. there. Yeah. I know what happened. <laughs> right. Do you have a room in the house that he's building? Um, the couch. <laughs> I'm, Matt and I are probably going to take over the, the movie room above the garage because nice. that place is a bathroom with a shower. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. You could just watch movies forever. That's awesome. But he's building a studio slash gym slash cigar lounge. So we'll probably need to hit you up for some, Sweet. some tips there. Yes. Uh, behind the house. And so we'll have like our edit set up and we're going to shoot his videos in there. I'm looking forward to that. I'll be your that cigar plug. Awesome. Come through anytime. Mm. I'm giving you, on behalf of Max, the official invite. Thank you. 
Yeah. You're welcome. Can I I'm excited to see it. You're in. Let's go. <laughs> yes. I'm there. Yeah. You can do a satellite podcast from uh, from his lounge. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd be amazing. That'd be That'd so be much great. fun. Yeah. Where are you going next week? Maybe I'm just here. I don't think anywhere. But, you know, that could change in 10 minutes. I have no yeah. idea. So you'll most likely go to Florida again. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Florida or some some place that's allowing um, travel. Although with that plane, you can kind of pull up anywhere. Yeah. Is there anything you want our audience to know? Just contact and like how to reach you or how to if they want information on your course. At Davis Media on I think all social platforms, mostly mm-hmm. on Instagram on there quite a bit. And then the course is CEO content blueprint dot com and that is the that's the course if you're trying to build personal brand on top of your business let me know i'm very active in the group it's a small group right now it's a good time to get in because i will talk to you yes if it gets too big no promises i will try my best Mm -hmm. yes and we'll put the link in our caption bio too kind yeah too kind to allow me to do that i really appreciate it no problem That's right. Dave, Dave is media. Dave is media. And Dave is media is the reason why this podcast has happened. So we Respect. thank you for so much for helping us just get launched and giving us the vision and the like the fire. The drive, like Ari Gold gives Lloyd. Channeling it. So we yeah. appreciate Lloyd. you guys so much. Lloyd. So much. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm, I, that's why I do it. I love to hear it. Yeah. Love to hear it. Beautiful coming full circle. Thanks for being here with us. Thank you. Of course. (laughs) Love you guys.